Now on 10 News this morning, the president frustrated his struggles both overseas and back home in Washington. Expected high surf for your Sunday and increasing humidity. I'm watching your forecast for your early Sunday morning. And we're live from Waterfront Park, where thousands are warming up for the Live Well 5K. In fact, some have already finished the run. 10 News This Morning starts right now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. And welcome back. Great to see you on this Sunday morning. We're on top of all the news you need to start your day. I'm Jim Pat. I'm Mary McKenzie. We're glad you're here. Grab another cup of coffee. We're going to check in with weather. And we saw some surfers out in the water. Now we've got a beautiful view the other direction. Yeah, and it's high surf today. So yep. for the good surfers, they're enjoying <laughs> it, definitely. Live look outside here. This is Coronado. So we're not quite seeing full clearing at the beaches just yet, but lots of sunshine in store for today for your Sunday. Want to bring you outside here, downtown Sky Cam. Current conditions, 71 degrees. Winds coming out of the north northeast. 3 miles per hour sunset at 748 tonight. Now hour by hour here along the coast, so still some cloud cover in certain areas, but we are going to bump it up to the upper 70s by this afternoon by about 2 o'clock 77 degrees. And then in our inland communities, warmer for today, about 85 by 2 o'clock, and then we cool it on down to 70 degrees by our evening hours. When I come back, I will have your full weather forecast, Jim. Over. Mel, thank you. President Trump frustrated with the battles going on overseas and on Capitol Hill. He tweeted his displeasure with China over North Korea and the Senate over the failed health care reform bill. ABC's David Wright has the struggles in Washington. U.S. warplanes fueled and ready. This bilateral mission on the Korean Peninsula, a direct response to the North's provocation. Friday's launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile was especially worrying. ICBMs might be able to reach the continental U.S., so the U.S. is testing countermeasures. Overnight, the president also fired back with tweets. I'm very disappointed in China, he wrote in one tweet. Then in another, they do nothing for us with North Korea. Just talk. We will no longer allow this to continue. Earlier in the day, another tweet storm on health care reform. This one directed at members of his own party, calling them total quitters if they don't hold a revote, taunting them, saying they look like fools and are just wasting time. Boy, oh boy. They've been working on that one for seven years. Can you believe that? The swamp. The president blames Senate rules that require a 60-vote majority to end debate and pass major pieces of legislation. Republican Senate must get rid of 60 vote now, he tweeted. It is killing the Republican Party, allows eight Democrats to control the country. But that's not what killed health care reform. It took just 51 votes to scuttle that bill. Republican John McCain's dramatic thumbs down. One big question now, as General John Kelly takes over as the new chief of staff, who will take over at Homeland Security? Some senior White House aides want Attorney General Jeff Sessions to move into that role, but that may be a non-starter with Senate Republicans. Senator Lindsey Graham pointedly tweeted, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has a good ring to it, highly qualified, committed to the rule of law, tough on crime, and fiercely independent. A trip to the fair turns tragic. I was kind of shocked because because the ride was still going and and I'm thinking that it's going to be us next like it's going to break off. Victims of the accident at the Ohio State Fair are talking about what happened the day a carnival ride killed an 18 year old Marine. Seven more people were injured when part of the fireball ride broke off. One of those victims fractured his neck. He says he switched seats before the ride started, and that may have saved his life. That was our seats at first. If we never would have got switched it, that would have been us. 10 News uncovered that safety experts here have been inspecting the Beach Blaster ride at Belmont Park. It's similar to the ride at the Ohio State Fair, and it will stay closed until inspectors say it's safe to reopen. Well, new details on this baby whale that washed up on the, uh, at Scripps Pier on Friday. Veterinarians at SeaWorld say she is in critical condition. The pygmy sperm whale calf is in a rehabilitation pool at SeaWorld's rescue center. SeaWorld says she's only weeks old and they're still working to stabilize her and figure out what's wrong. 
Lifeguards say they've seen the calves mother out in the water showing signs of distress. The public, the fit part of the public anyway, came together to honor fallen officer Jonathan J.D. de Guzman by working out Saturday. Four CrossFit gym locations held a special tribute in his memory this weekend. De Guzman was shot and killed in the line of duty one year ago. Yesterday's workout was called the GS24 Partner Workout, named after de Guzman's call sign. The Navy's latest destroyer entered service this weekend, honoring a San Diego Marine who was killed in combat. The USS Rafael Peralta was commissioned in Coronado yesterday. 64th Arleigh Burke class destroyer honors Peralta, who was born in Mexico City. He joined the Marines as soon as he was eligible and became a U.S. citizen. Peralta is credited with saving the lives of fellow Marines during the Second Battle of Fallujah in 2004. Sergeant Peralta's legacy and the stories been told will forever be part of this ship. All he ever wanted to be was an American, to serve his country. City Council proclaimed Tuesday Sergeant Peralta Day in San Diego. Our city will be the ship's home port. Some frightening new video of a man trying to rob a woman as she uses the ATM here. She pulls into the drive through window in Fairfax, Virginia, gets out of her car, starts the transaction. This guy lurking behind her then sneaks up, pushes her out of the way, and tries to get her money out. Then he gets into the passenger seat of her car, demanding money from her. Thankfully, she fought back, yelling and punching him, and he took off. Police say another woman was robbed at that same ATM recently. An Army veteran is accusing a California university of treating him unfairly. 31-year-old Purple Heart veteran Ivan Zamora goes to Notre Dame de Namur University in Belmont. He applied for on-campus housing for next semester, but was denied just a few days ago. School says they don't let anyone over 25 live on campus. A rule Zamora says wasn't enforced when he lived in the dorms last year. He and six other veterans are scrambling to find an affordable apartment before classes start next month. And it's just hard to know that, you know, you come back and when you want to do something right, you know, get a higher education, you're not, you know, you're not welcome with, with open arms. Rent in the area averages $2,500 per month. Zamora says he can't afford that with the GI Bill. School is now looking into the situation. If you have a fear of flying, you may want to hear this. A new class is specifically designed to help people get over that fear. Every time I got on a plane, I thought it was the last time I would get on a plane. And the class helps people like Sarah Anderson. She has missed dozens of family vacations because she's afraid to fly. And Jerry Schumacher there, he had a bad flight back in the 70s. He's been taking Amtrak for the past 40 years. Jerry and Sarah, though, are now graduates of the Fearless Flight class at Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix. Ron Nielsen has been a pilot for 45 years, and he's one of the teachers. It's either fear of losing control, giving it up to a pilot, so there's trust issues involved, or it's fear of losing control emotionally and making a spectacle out of myself. It's a good idea. The class goes through the mechanics of an airplane. It also helps students manage anxiety, and it worked for Sarah and Jerry and changed the way they get around. I think a lot of people have tricks for how they deal with their fear of flying, getting Whatever on the plane. Whatever you need to do, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, happening now, thousands of people in San Diego are walking or running in support of the San Diego Blood Bank in a healthy, strong community. Hopefully some of them are now recovering. It's the Live Well San Diego 5K10 News reporter Jessica Chen is live at Waterfront Park for the event. And Jessica, you've got some 10 News folks out there with you and a whole lot of folks who successfully finished the race. Good morning again. That's right, 10 News is a sponsor, so we have some of our coworkers out here, but a lot of people are just finishing their 5K, people behind me taking their commemorative shots so they can remember this event. But of course, this event is also benefiting the San Diego Blood Bank. And right now I'm joined by Stephanie. She's a mom of three young boys, triplets in fact, and you're telling me that three boys really benefited from the San Diego Blood Bank. Yes, they did. These are my triplet boys, Christopher, Cameron, and Hunter, or actually Christopher, Hunter, and Cameron. Um, and they were born at 27 weeks. They were 27 week triplets. They spent three months in the hospital and they had nine blood transfusions. Um, the blood, San Diego Blood Bank did save their lives. They were able to get the blood immediately when they needed the blood transfusions. Um, they brought them to Mary Birch Hospital and they had three separate ones and we're just so thankful for the San Diego uh, Blood Bank and that's why we're here today to support them. My husband Chris and I have been uh, blood donors for a long time. We never thought that we would ever need the blood and never thought that the boys would would need you it. You said this, this blood transfusion, it was life-saving for your three boys. It was, they would not be here without the, the blood. The, I know that, no doubt about it. 
obviously a very important event and of course mom, her three boys, her family here supporting this Live Well event and again the event really just kind of kicking off because people are finishing it but they are going to be staying because there are going to be a bunch of events for families and kids. We're now reporting at Waterfront Park, Jessica Chen, 10 News. Weather Rate Certified, San Diego's most accurate forecast. This is 10 News Pinpoint Weather. For great rates and a better banking experience, visit missionfed.com today. How'd you like that triplet train? Oh, <laughs> cute. So, I love how the mom couldn't remember the, the kids. I could relate mix, to that. I don't know who second? your people are right now. For a second, yeah, yeah for a Amazing. split second. I've done that before. <laughs> I know, and I don't have triplets. Yeah. <laughs> so kudos to that mom Aww. and everyone who finished the race. But the important Sorry. message here is that they talked about how important it was to donate blood. So great event out there. I'm glad 10 News is a sponsor. Let's go ahead and bring you outside here to our current conditions. So folks there at the Embarcadero dealing with the lower 70s, so fairly comfortable for that 5K. We are still dealing with some cloud cover along the coast, keeping things nice and calm, at least for now. This is a live look at La Jolla, hazy conditions to start off your Sunday morning. If you are heading to the beaches, you do plan to get in the water. We are expecting higher than normal surf. That's because of tropical storms. That's what we're feeling the effects of here. So we are seeing surf between uh, four to six feet, and it's mostly there for our North County beaches or Orange County if you do plan to head up north. We do have high pressure sitting over the west that is keeping things warm for our region, and we are seeing a lot of activity here just to the east of us, so we are going to feel the effects of this as well. The monsoonal moisture going to keep things warm here and actually humid for the next few days, something we will continue to watch. Now we do have a chance of some rain here, some showers and thunderstorms, mostly for our mountain and desert communities, about a 10 to 20% chance over the next few days. Forecast highs for today, we are going to be in the 70s here along the coast, triple digits there in the deserts, Julian about 86 degrees and in the 80s here for our inland valleys. Our seven day forecast here again, so we're watching that humidity over the next few days and then we're going to bump up our temperatures to the lower 80s here. Our inland areas, we're going to hit the 90s by the latter half of the week and then the mountains and the deserts. I kind of feel like we're repeating every weekend, but again, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, triple digit uh, temperatures there in the desert. Pretty normal this time of year, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. but it's not too bad. We can yeah. we can deal with it. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. Thank you, Mel.